some. It's like, that's a super smushy claim, right? I mean, it's not, it's not a very powerful claim. And that's like saying, you know, s some people who exercise lose weight. Okay, so what? Right? I mean, it's not a very interesting claim, but it's true. So yeah, it's not it's not it's not a, the most compelling kind of claim you could make. It would be much more interesting if they said, you know, 65% of soldiers diagnosed with PTSD end up returning to the war zone. That would be a much more interesting and satisfying. You're right. Yeah, we agree with that. Okay. How are we doing on time? 12:09. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about the test. How about that? Yeah. Now everyone's like, oh, flip open my notes. Let's go. Tell me about this. Just so you know kind of how it's laid out. Um, you can expect, um, and Javier, you can back me up on this, having taken my tests, <laughs> you can say whether or not I'm, I'm, I'm leading or misleading them. Um, you can expect on the test to see questions of the following types. Matching, where I give you a word bank, and then I give you examples and definitions, and you have to match items from the word bank to the examples or definitions. Okay. There are always more terms in the word bank than there are things on the list, so it's True. not a process of elimination. You can't just, you know, it's not that you're going to get one word for everything on the list. There typically are um, six, to, six to eight more terms in the word bank than you need. Okay. So you just have to actually be able to recognize all the terms. Know what they all mean and be able to recognize examples. So I could do something like, um, like this one. Um, if I said, for example, OMG, texting and IMing doesn't have spelling, is an example of this type of claim. And you would have to pick causal from the list. Okay. So there's matching. Um, I like fill in the blank, okay. where I might give you uh, definition or example and then have you identify, give me the, generate the term. So it's not matching, you actually have to know the terms. What terms tend to go in fill in the blank questions for me? They tend to be things that I have bolded on overheads or, um, or underlined on overheads or on handouts. So if I've bolded it or underlined it or if it's bolded or underlined in the book, then we're talking about term I care about. If it's a term that I've used in class and it's in the book, gets even more priority. If it's something like, I mean, we can just think right now. Things you better know the difference between. Causal claims, association claims, frequency claims. Construct validity, statistical validity, internal validity, external validity. Independent variables and dependent variables. Between subjects designs and within subjects designs. Confounds and extraneous variables. Right? I mean, these are terms we've been using over and over and over. You need to know the difference, all those different terms. You need to know all the different threats to internal validity. You need to be able to recognize them. Um, so if, they, if things are showing up in multiple places, that tells you that I really care about it. Um, so we do some fill in the blank. I will give you application problems. Those problems are very similar to the ones you see. Javier's nodding. In fact, sometimes I take problems straight off the problem set and put them on the test. So people who actually were paying attention while we worked on the problem set are like, I know the exact answer to this question. Because I, we actually did it. Okay. So make sure you know the problem sets and you know what the answers are for the problem set. Um, so then there will be multiple choice. And you know I might do multiple choice like this one. Say I gave you uh, little description of a study, and then I might say, okay, so for the following questions, we're referring to this little scenario. And then I might say, okay, so the independent variable for this study is A, this thing, B, this thing, C, this thing, D, this thing, E, this thing. And you have to pick which one is the right independent variable. Or I might say, so one group in this study got only the regular treatment. This is an example of a blank control. And then I might have all the different kinds of controls, and you have to pick which one it is. I am not a tricky test writer. I'm not trying to trick you. This stuff is hard enough as it is. But you should always read the instructions because 
I will give you all kinds of hints about what it is I want you to do, whether it's through working through things on problem sets or giving you very specific instructions on the test, but you should be able to do any of the things we've done on the problem set on the test. So if I give you a set of data and say, okay, so here are all the subjects that we're in a study. Here are scores that you're going to use as a matching variable. Here's a random order. You should be able to figure out which subjects you're going to put in the first matched group and list them for me using this random order. So you should be able to generate random orders, Latin square, blocks, all the blocks. You should be able to figure out how many possible random orders you need, just like we started today at the beginning of class with 6 times, 5 times, 4 times, 3 times, 2 times, 1. You should be able to do all that stuff. And if we've gone over it again and again, you definitely want to be able to do it. And I know, Javier, you posted um, times for study groups, mm -hmm. right? Um, and Javier has my key for the problem set. So if there's anything you missed on the problem set or you want to double check and make sure you understand, he knows what I think the right answers are. And since I'm writing the test and grading it, that's what matters. Okay. Um, the test is worth 75 points total. You can expect, I mean, questions are typically worth two points. Um, you can expect uh, <coughs> maybe 30 or 40 questions. Um, I don't do it by, oh, there's 75 points, so there's 75 questions or something like that. I just ask you the questions I need to ask you, and then I figure out what proportion of those you got right, and then I figure out what your grade was out of 75 points. So we will do the test in here, in class, on Tuesday. Come with your calculator. You, for exams in this class, you get to use one four by six note card with handwritten notes on both sides. So you can write your little heart. I mean, you can put everything you need to know. If you write really small, you might be able to get everything you need. So four by six. This is a three by five. Anybody have a four by six card for show and tell? We can make sure everybody gets the right size card. Because you don't want to go with three by five card when you can have four by six. There we go. One of these big ones. Both sides. I only had one side. I know, you only had one side, but I gave you formula sheets. They're not going to get formula sheets. They have to choose their formulas. Oh. So. All right, so both sides, right? And you will turn your card in with your test. So please make sure if you'd like to have a copy of it for study purposes that you take photos or scan it before you come in for the test that day because I will collect your card with your test. Okay? All right, go forth and be awesome. Check the discussion board. And don't forget to tell Javier on Desire to Learn whether or not you've been watching his videos, because he's making them for you, so he needs to know if you're watching them. Are you feeling better? You think you got this? You think you got it? You guys can do this. I believe in you. Tenaciously.